What's up guys? Today I want to talk about the best illuminating setting powders, which if you haven't tried yet, I highly recommend you do so. If you're looking for new ways to make your skin look lit from within, you have dull dry skin, you have combo skin like me, and you're just looking for a good way to get that dewy lit from within glow without your skin getting out of control oily at the end of the day, these, these are what you have been looking for. Now, if you've been with me here for a while on the channel, some of these will be repeats because I have been a long time lover of illuminating powders, but we finally have some brands, drugstore brands, that are throwing their hats into the illuminating face powder ring. And now that I finally had a chance to try them and form an opinion on them, um, that's, that's where this video is coming from. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, I want to start with the powders that introduced me to illuminating setting powders. They are the Lancome Absolute powders. I have the shade Absolute Peche, which is my favorite. It has more of a golden undertone. And then I also have Absolute Golden, which ironically doesn't have the gold undertone. It has more of a pinky undertone. And I find that on my neutral skin, the pink is just a little bit too cool for me. So I tend to reach for Peche. I do have a more in-depth review of both of these if you want to go check it out. But they are loose powders and basically Basically, well, basically with all of these, I take a big fluffy brush, something like this is the Scott Barnes 76 brush, also very similar to the Morphe E41 brush, just something very big and dense yet also fluffy that you can swirl in here, then tap off in the cap here and just swirl like all over your face to give your skin this sheen of perfection, like this stuff right here. and. Almost everything I'm gonna talk about here today is a real life Instagram filter for your face. Like, have I told you how in love I am with these yet? Anywho, so these are two of the loose powders that I have. And again, depending on your undertone, there are more shades than this in the line, I believe. So you don't have to just go with gold or pink. There might be a shade that is better suited to you. But the two shades that I have tried are very lightly pigmented, so you don't need to worry about going too overboard with it. They are definitely shimmery. Um, you can see if you go too heavy, you might get a little bit of a cast on your skin. So you can layer them up to be, I'm not wearing them as highlight today, but you can layer them up as a highlight in areas where you would typically highlight and then go lighter across the rest of the face. And with any of these, don't go setting your under eyes with them. They will emphasize any sort of texture you have under there. But when it comes to setting the rest of your makeup, one of the great things about these and all the other powders I'm going to talk about here is they not only give your skin that flawless filter over the top, but they do help to set your makeup, which is why as someone with combo skin, I much prefer powders like these to other glowy alternatives like maybe glowy primers, glowy lotions, things like that, that depending on the state of my skin can only make the shine worse throughout the day. I start with a dewy glow, but then it gets like a runaway train at the end of the day. These give you the glow, but they also set your makeup at the same time. So you have a little bit of that oil control protection in there too. Next up is one I bought when I thought my beloved Absolute Peche was going, was going to be discontinued. It's not though. Um, this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder Glow. This is kind of similar to Absolute Peche. I actually have a video comparing the two if you want something more in depth, but the bottom line is no, they are not identical. The Laura Mercier is a little bit thicker, I would say. It's a little bit easier to go overboard with than the Lancome because it has a little bit more pigment to it. Kind of similar to the act, like the texture of her normal translucent loose setting powder, but this has more of a golden tinge to it. Even more golden, I would say, than Absolute Peche. Absolute Peche is a little bit frostier gold, whereas Laura Mercier is a true warm gold. And unfortunately, there are no other shades in this. This, the glow is all you get, the glow and the regular translucent matte loose setting powder, that's all you get. So it's a little bit, bit less flexible in terms of undertones. But if you're looking for something that has a little bit more of a robust texture, might set your makeup a little bit better, this will be the one you wanna reach for over the Lancome. Pick number three, let's now talk about a drugstore equivalent to both of the loose powders I've just talked about here. The Flower Beauty Miracle Glow Satin Finishing Powder. This is similar to the textures I've just talked about before. I would say it's most similar to the Lancome Absolute Powder and the shade is just about like you mixed the Absolute Peige and the Absolute Golden together. It's not quite golden, it's not quite as pinky leaning as the Absolute Golden, but it does have a slight pinky hue. And again, this is the only shade that you can get in this powder. So I think this might give you a little bit more flexibility with this undertone 
it's not way way gold and warm it's not super cool and pink it's right there in the middle and it gives you a little bit less sheer coverage than all of the options I have talked about so far really the one downside with this thing is the packaging it's quite a bit bulkier and a little more cumbersome than the other two I've talked about that both have twist caps the deal with this guy is that you pull this off the top and because there's such a strong suction here I do end up with fallout around the rim sometimes it flies everywhere when I open it um, it comes with a poof, which I do not recommend you use with any of these. It's, it's nice to have to keep the product in place when you have the sifter here like this, but when you first try this out, I really recommend you go in with a fluffy brush like this because you can always add more. It's harder to take away. So see how much of this you like first before you go layering it on, and certainly before you go using this guy right off the bat because you might look like you did the highlighter challenge if you're doing your makeup and then you finish off by patting a bunch of this on your skin it might be a bit much. But back to the packaging, again, that's kind of the one downside for me, but you can always depot this. I believe this sifter thing here, you can pop that right out, decant the powder into something that is more easily, easily, more, is more easy for you to access and maybe a little bit more travel friendly since this is just so bulky. Number four, let's talk about a product that has been around for ages, but I haven't really seen anyone use as an all over setting sort of powder. Maybe that's for a reason. Maybe it's just because I haven't seen it and it's totally happening elsewhere. But I will say, when I told the sales associate what I was going to use my MAC uh, Mineralized Skin Finish Warm Rose Powder for, um, they they were like, are you sure? Is that really how you want to use that all over your face? So something tells me it's not a thing a lot of people do, but I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Either way, that is what pick number four is for me, is the Mineralized Skin Finishes from MAC. Now, you can go in store and swatch all of these. Some of them are very, very shimmery. You would definitely only want to use them as a highlight. But Warm Rose in particular has this beautiful, soft, pinker leaning sheen, hence the, if I can get it open. I really wish they would put a notch here at the bottom because the magnetic closure is nice, but it's there's not a really easy way to like bring it up. Anywho, Warm Rose has that beautiful pink undertone. It's not so pink that it's going to look really, really cool on everyone. And even though it has a teensy little bit of pink glitter to it, it's not so much that it's, I mean, I'm wearing it all over my face today. This is the one that because I felt like people would least expect this to look good all over your face, I wanted to wear it today. And I mean, you can't see glitter even up close. You can't see the glitter in here. It just comes off. This is this beautiful, iridescent, soft, glowing, ethereal looking finish all over the skin. Again, you might not want to do this with every shade in the Mineralized Skin Finish line, but Warm Rose is definitely a winner, and I do love that it is pressed. Prior to trying this and the last one I'm going to talk about, I hadn't really encountered any pressed versions like this, which I find is easier to layer up on the skin, it's harder to overdo, and it's just more travel friendly when you don't have to worry about playing roulette. You know, is this going to explode on me when I open it? Am I going to need to change my clothes when I'm wearing my product after I open it? That whole thing. I just, I like the stability of a pressed powder so much more than a loose. So love this. And then my last pick, kind of like I hinted at, another pressed version, but a drugstore version. This is the new NYX High Glass Finishing Powder. I say new. I think it's new, but it might have actually been out for a few months. Anywho, it's Eye of Light, one of three shades, light, medium, deep. And in the pan, this looks like a highlighting powder. Like when I saw this on the shelf, I thought, Mm, they, they have a highlighter in this collection, but they also have this one, the finishing powder, and the two look very similar, but when you actually use and swatch this finishing powder, it behaves more like a finishing powder. It's very sheer. It takes a lot of layering to get more of a highlighted look, and the basic effect of just using a thin layer is exactly like all the other powders I have just talked about. So it really, even though it looks very shiny in the pan, it performs just like an illuminating finishing or setting powder, and it has probably the most neutral undertone of all of those that I've tried. It's a slightly golden champagne, but it's nowhere near as gold as the others that I've tried, and it's certainly not cool. So this, I find, is the most middle of the road in terms of undertone compared to everything else I've talked about, and it's an incredibly affordable version. Of all of those that 
that I have here. This is what I've been using most frequently recently, just because again, it's a convenient press powder. It's very flattering for my skin and it's just so hard to mess up. Of course, with the loose powders, you have a little bit more flexibility in terms of mixing them with your lotions, your moisturizers, your foundations even. If you don't wanna use it as a setting powder glow, you think it's too much for that. But if you are first starting out with these and you want a little bit more control and want to make sure you don't overdo it and have the best experience possible, I would say start with a pressed powder uh, like either of these. Fun fact, uh, when I ordered this one, I also ordered one from Catrice that by everything about the name led me to believe it would be something that I was looking for, the Prime and Fine Lubinizing Powder Waterproof in Radiant Beige. There is nothing radiant about this, but I have found I enjoy setting my under eyes with it. Whether or not it's waterproof remains to be seen, um, but just a heads up, if you Google luminizing or illuminating face powder and this guy pops up, no, no, this is not what you are looking for. This is very much a matte powder, but the rest of these that I've talked about are awesome. Highly recommend them. If you want to watch any of the videos that I mentioned earlier here, you can go click this box down below, or if you just want more makeup content in general, you can click this one right here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.